Thanks, Justin, and good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mayor Rao Valdez Fowley, who will be offering his State of the City Beautiful address. We are most grateful that our mayor uses this venue to share what is happening in our city. Mayor Valdez Fowley was re-elected mayor of the city of Coral Gables in April 2017. He served previously as mayor of the city beautiful from 1993 to 2001, as well as vice mayor from 87 to 88, and city commissioner from 85 to 89. Mayor Valdez Fowley is a longtime and renowned banking leader, law leader rather, in the community, and currently serves as partner for the law firm Fox Rothschild. These past two weeks have not been easy in the city beautiful, so we are especially grateful for his presence today. Please welcome Mayor Rao Valdez Fowley. <laughs> Before I start, I'd like to wish our Jewish friends a happy and prosperous New Year. It's a beautiful day in Coral Gables and everywhere, and um, I wish them the best. This is the State of the City address, and uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank our Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce for all of the great, great work you are doing it's been very, the last two weeks have been very, very trying, but I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize <clears throat> certain special people, our commissioners who are here and who were very um, active in this, Commissioner Quesada, Commissioner Lago, Vice Mayor Pat Keon, our city manager, our city clerk, our city attorney, and our two assist, one assistant city manager, Frank Fernandez, who's here, who led the evacuation, safety, um, curfew, whatever it is, efforts, and did a great job. And our other assistant city manager, uh, Peter Iglesias, is not with us because he's out there picking trash, and that's where he should be. <laughs> I'd like to talk about Hurricane Irma. Anybody here named Irma? <laughs> Thank God, nobody. So I can say what I feel. Uh, it, it, these, are, these have been very trying times, very, very trying times but they have proved their businesses are resilient. Some businesses, if they had power, opened the very next day after um, the hurricane passed, and that is good. That is very, very good. In terms of safety, I was told that we had two arrests for breaking into a business, but we, we caught the people, and that, those were the only incidents we had during the storm, which is a wonderful effort by a police um, department, the Chief Hudak is here, and our Fire Department, also whose Chief is also here. <laughs> We're cleaning debris now. We have over 70 trucks, and we have, they say, 170,000 cubic yards of trash debris to be removed. I think it's a lot more than that. In front of my house, only in front of my house, there are 100 yards. Um, and uh, it's, we have a huge job. It took us a few days, like two or three days, to get started because we had um, to find a place to put these 170,000 yards, and we did in 72nd Avenue, the old incinerator site. We have two football fields um, where we can deposit this, our football fields, and a huge, huge um, uh, shredder, I mean, a, a chipper, to, to do, you know, what do you do with 170,000 cubic yards? You have to do something with it. Our efforts are going very, very well. We expect to finish in two or three weeks, three weeks maybe. Uh, we're picking 10, 12,000 yards a day, and we are concentrating on doing this. We did a wonderful job in cleaning these streets. The day after the hurricane, all of the major thoroughfares in Coral Gables were open, they were transitable. And two or three days afterwards, all of the side streets were, were open, and uh, we're concentrating on the garbage pickup, and I think that we're doing a fine job within the disaster this has been. On to power. Channel 7 reported today that only seven people in Miami-Dade County did not have power. Only seven people. 
and, uh, or 10 people, I'm sorry. And I know three of those people who are here. So I tend to discount that report. One of them is our city manager, for example, who's sitting here and who's very important. And uh, I hope that she's the last to get power so that we don't, we're not accused of favoritism. <laughs> but what you're seeing there is the corner of Granada and Coral Way. And look at that. Look, look at those lights. We have taken legal action against tip and um, The first time we took legal action was Thursday of last week. They wanted us to clear the trees before they could get to the wires, trees that were leaning on the wires. And we said, absolutely not. Uh, over our dead bodies, we're going to do that because we don't want to electrocute people on top of the tragedies that may have befallen us. And they had they have specialized crews to clean those um, wires, trees, specialized crews, which they had not made available to us. And because of our legal action, they made them available to us. We, have, we are thinking of taking legal action against them. And we also have fined them for the, they promised to restore electricity by 12, 11.45, I think it was, Sunday. And they didn't. So we're fining them for. Um, homes that don't have electricity. But let me tell you what they, they say we're selfish. They say we want um, to have um, favoritism on Coral Gables. Do you know how many of you ha have ever used a rotary phone? I have. You know, the, 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 our transformers were made, were manufactured in 1969. Our transformers. Princess phones had not been invented at that time, and yet those are the transformers that are up there supplying electricity to us. That's shameful, and that's something that we, as a government, Coral Gables government, have to do something about. I saw, and I, I don't know how many of you went down Granada, 5,600 Granada telephone, I mean, uh, electricity poles broken in half. Those poles should be, they're wood, they should be replaced every few years, and they had not been replaced, they were rotten, and broken in half, and there were dozens of those poles in our city. An example there. We have to force FPNL and Monopoly to pay attention, not only to Coral Gables, but to Miami-Dade County and to our communities. And we're going to take the leadership on that. We're going to take the leadership because we want them to be responsive. They got, through the, the Public Service Commission, a 23% raise in um, tariffs last year because of the good service they were providing. I've always been told that I'm outspoken, but I say a bull. Um, we are taking legal action against them, and uh, you know we, we need infrastructure update, and we want to get those lines underground. They are against our putting the lines underground, and they have told us that it's something like I don't know, 17 or 20 or 27 million dollars a mile to underground them. We're forming a committee, to, a, an expert committee, to tell us how much that, that is involved. And we're going to try to force FPNL to lay those um, wires underground. Anyway, one of the big problems we had when I was mayor in 93, after Andrew in 92, I became mayor in 93, we replaced 3,000 trees in Coral Gables that had fallen. Unfortunately, at that time, not all of the ficus trees fell, but they fell this time. Ficus trees were planted by George Merrick because they grow fast and they expand and they provide greenery and such. And they belong in golf courses, they belong in big parks, but they don't belong in narrow swales. And we are making a commitment to eradicate ficus trees from swales so that we don't have this next tragedy whenever the hur next hurricane happens again in 25 years from now. We're going to eradicate ficus trees and replace them with live oaks or other trees that have survived the hurricane very well. The next big project we're having is a public safety building. I don't know if you're familiar with um, our current public safety building in Salcedo, uh, but this was built in the 1970s, and it was so poorly built that it had uh, leakage and whatever since the very, very beginning, apart from it being the ugliest building in Coral Gables, but um, since the very beginning, and it is so bad that we cannot park. There's a fire truck that we have, which we need in the city. We cannot park it in the building because the building settles if we park it there. If you go and look at the building, you'll see on the, on the side under a canopy a fire truck 
and we can't park it in the building. We are going to have a state-of-the-art safety building, and uh, you know, it's, we're going to do well. We're going to do well. It's going to be in Salcedo again, a few blocks north of, um, north of Alhambra Circle. And um, the, the, I don't know if you remember the Coral Gables Laundry, but it used to be there, that, that property. And it's ours. We traded it with uh, Mr. Codina and his group and gave him the current public safety building, which I hope he tears down, and we're going to build a new one. There, there it is, Lot 6, Menorca, Salcedo, and Alcazar. And uh, I have the pleasure of reporting that five months ago, when we came into office, the, the current commission and myself as mayor, we had 16 police vacancies. Today, we have four, which is wonderful, wonderful. And uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to report that. The next big challenge uh, I'm going to report on, and I'm reporting challenges, and then I'll report opportunities. Uh, the next big challenge is our educational system, access to schools. Coral Gables High School, when I moved into Coral Gables many years ago, was the pride and joy of not only Coral Gables, but the state of Florida. It was a wonderful school, excellent. Class A, we didn't categorize them that way then, but it was a wonderful, wonderful school. Today, it is B, but up to last year, it was a C school, and only 14% of the kids in the Coral Gables High School live in Coral Gables. I think that's shameful. We had the International Baccalaureate Program, which they moved out to, um, to Coral Reef, I'm sorry, Coral Reef, 10 miles away from Coral Gables. Why? Why is that? West Lab, which is a wonderful school at the University of Miami campus, there it is, only 18% of its kids are from Coral Gables. We bear the brunt of having those schools in the middle of Coral Gables with the traffic it creates and with everything else it creates, and 18% here and 14% in Coral Gables High. I think that it's only 14% in Coral Gables because the quality of education is so bad that parents don't want to send their kids to Coral Gables High. Many years ago, when I was trying to recruit multinationals, and we, at the end of my first term, we had 150 multinationals here, but they said, yes, you don't have any income tax, and yes, you know, your military rate is five point whatever it is, but you have a hidden tax, and that is $15,000, $25,000 at that time, after tax, to pay for private schools, whether it's Gulliver, Ransom, um, Palmer Trinity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is a shame, and we need to force the school administration, the school board, to um, change that. And this is the school board. This is not our elected school board officials. This is the school um, administration that is discriminating against us. We have a plan, and we have the money to buy seats there to provide a class per year for Coral Gables kids. They're saying that's discriminatory and that we would reduce uh, variety, diversity, we're adding new places in the school. We're not taking places away from anybody, and we want to buy those because I think that we, Coral Gables, are entitled to send our kids to our school. There's an even worse uh, thing in the schools, and then I'll get away from the schools. Um, the craft section in Coral Gables, which is the part of Coral Gables that is close to, um, to uh, Douglas, south of Miracle Mile, north of Bird. Do you think that they are 10, 12 blocks away from our Coral Gables uh, prep, or Coral Gables Elementary, and they are 10 or 12 blocks away from Carver? And no, but the school administration forces them to go to Tucker School, which is they have to bypass, they have to somersault two schools in order to go to Tucker. Do you know where Tucker is? Why not? Why not Coral Gables Elementary? I mean, Coral Gables Prep, why not? Carver, which is where they should go. No, they're forced to go to another school. Anyway, that, that's, that's shameful, I think, and we are going to take, um, we are going to take uh, measures against the school board in order to try to remedy that situation because it is extremely unfair. Sustainability initiatives. Now we get to the, I'll stop whining, and sustainability initiatives. Um, we are at the forefront of sustainable efforts in not only Miami-Dade County, but in the state. Um, sustainability Master Plan, we have com commenced it, 
And we're committed to reducing energy and water consumption in Coral Gables, fewer, um, fewer usage <clears throat> in greenhouse emissions by 20% by 2025. And we are doing a great job, and we're very much on, our, on, on the way to that. Also, we passed, first in Florida, the plastic bag uh, bans and the polystyrene uh, products bans, and uh, I think that we took the leadership on that. Very much opposed by the legislature, but with our fine city attorney, Craig Lean, because of the home rule uh, provisions, we can sustain those, I think. In addition, I attended in Stowe, Vermont, a Resilient Cities Summit. We had 10 cities from all over the United States, Flagstaff, Arizona, Fremont, California, um, St. Augustine from Florida, Charleston, and uh, <clears throat> I went with Matt Anderson, a great uh, sustainability uh, person in charge of sustainability, and they wanted to hear from us our experiences on global, not global warming, but sea level rise and what we're doing with our low-lying communities. So we took the leadership, the national leadership on that. These are the bold initiatives of the commission that I am proud to lead, and this is wonderful. Financial data, we just approved our military rate and had our first um, 5.559. It's been the same military rate for the last six years, which is wonderful. Wonderful because we're very responsible. We have an emergency reserve fund, thank God, because of this hurricane of 25% of our budget. At one point, it got as low as 1%. And you will see that our millage rates compare Coral Gables with uh, Miami and uh, Hialeah and Miami Beach. And we're doing great, frankly. We're doing great in Coral Gables with the quality of services that we provide. We are doing great. And we're also talking about incorporating into our city uh, Little Gables and then High Pines uh, down in the south. But first, Little Gables, which we surround, so that we're, we're going, just going to incorporate it formally and provide our security, our fine police, rescue, fire services to them because they're in the middle of Coral Gables anyway. And we can afford it, and I think it would be great for our safety and eventually for our, our finances, squaring our city. Um, in the last few years, in the last two years, new construction has seen a 5.3% 5 .5 increase, and our office vacancy rate is 8%, which is one of the lowest in Miami-Dade County. I go to public parks. In the last year, we purchased six new green spaces in Coral Gables, <clears throat> and our aim is to have a park accessible, closely accessible, to every neighborhood in Coral Gables. And we're on our way there. And I'd like to mention one of my pet peeves now, which is the Pond Circle Park, where I'm told we have historic pine trees, if you can see them. They don't provide shade, they don't provide anything, and they are the ugliest things I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I'm making it a, um, and Donna Spain, our, our historic director, her preservation director is here, but I'm, I'm telling her that I'm going to make her life impossible if we don't get rid of those trees and have it a usable park, a park with shade. We, the only thing we do there is cut the grass, and I want for that to be a park where people play, where uh, office workers have lunch, et cetera, and get rid of those darn pines. We will. Transportation, we bought two new trolleys to um, replace the old ones we had, and we have started a wonderful, wonderful new um, freebie service, on-demand, free, downtown ride, 22% increase in August. And you call it, and it'll take you anywhere you want to go in downtown for free, for free. Restaurants, shops, et cetera, et cetera, parks, I hope. And um, it is 22% uh, raise, and it is wonderful. <clears throat> Next is the arts. I made it a commitment of mine to do something about the arts in Coral Gables. We used to be the art capital, the art gallery capital of South Florida, and we lost those galleries in the last 15, 20 years, 15 years. And uh, I have the pleasure of announcing that as of five months ago, we have attracted to Coral Gables two new galleries uh, which have opened, and we are on our way to again restoring the art world in um, Coral Gables. And we have a very exciting project for 
uh, Art Basel for early December, bringing a world-class artist to have public art in Coral Gables. I bet you want to hear about Miracle Mile and Giralda. Yeah. Challenges. It's going to be beautiful. It's really going to be beautiful. And we were going to open um, Giralda on September 15th, I think it was September 13th. And then the hurricane came, and we postponed that to October 13th. It's going to be beautiful. Um, the street is great. The merchants have suffered. I mean, there's no question that the merchants have suffered. And uh, a few months ago, about a year ago, we were six months behind. Now we are on time, thanks to Peter Iglesias, our assistant city manager. We are on time in the completion of Miracle Mile, which I hope will be in December. It's going to be a beautiful street. We have, uh, we have eliminated uh, angle parking. We have parallel parking and provided wonderful trees, uh, flowers, features. The merchants are going to be very happy, and you will all be very happy. Retail strategy, uh, the city underwent the downtown retail strategy, which assessed the current compilation of businesses, analyzed customer base, and provided suggestions for creating the right retail mix with uh, BID, the, the Business Improvement District. We uh, concluded that while the city's existing retails were strong, retail stores were strong, we could use additional retailers in specific areas, including men's and women's fashion accessories, and some goods, um, leisure, uh, chef-driven restaurants. We are doing fine, but we can do much, much better. And it is our commitment to work with you all, the chamber, and with the Business Improvement District to do better. Recruitment and multinationals. When I became mayor in 93, we had 60-some multinationals. And uh, by my, the end of my term in 2001, we had 150 multinationals. We have 150 today, but we also have 48 technology and telecommunications companies based in Coral Gables. And I am proposing the creation of a committee, and we are creating it, on innovation. I want to make Coral Gables the innovation center of the Americas and the innovation center of Miami-Dade County and the state of Florida. We have the University of Miami with whom we're going to cooperate very, very closely. And uh, we're going to have a smart city. We, we are having it. We do have a smart city. Our information technology department is among the best. And we're going to provide fiber optics, communications, Wi-Fi services from Miracle Mile and Geralda. <coughs> I'm sorry, CCTV cameras with video analysis, internet of um, things, smart lighting sensors for pedestrian and vehicle traffic, parking and environmental enhancement and uh, automated you know, information systems, and digital signage, uh, to name a few, a few of the initiatives we're, we're taking. Those are some of the things we're, we're saying. I think our challenges are great. School, FPNL, and others, but our opportunities are great, and I commit to you that we're, we, I and the City Commission, are going to work very, very hard to continue having a world-class city, and uh, I thank you for the opportunity of addressing you and telling you my ideas. Thank you very much.